apologize, I'm a little under the weather, just came uh, from an uh, extended weekend out at Disney World with my family, so uh, <laughs> quite a change of scenery here, but uh, I'm going to try to blow through this in the seven minutes, uh, like the gentleman before me, I could go on for 70 minutes uh, about this. Uh, so I work at the Software Engineering Institute of uh, Carnegie Mellon University, and uh, I also work as an adjunct instructor there, so again, I can be long-winded. Now, um, I want to talk about some successes we've had with Moodle and the way that we're able to use it to help solve some of our training challenges. And at the uh, Software Engineering Institute, if I can find the clicker here. Uh, well, anyways, while we look for that. Uh, okay. Just hit. Okay, uh, so in the spirit of, uh, you know, legalese, <laughs> I have a slide from our lawyer saying I can speak with you. But uh, we are a federally funded research and development center, an FFRDC, and an FFRDC is charged with solving some of our nation's most challenging problems. And in the case of the Software Engineering Institute, uh, cybersecurity problems are our expertise. And I'm on a, a team at the SEI that focuses on training for the cyber workforce. And the cyber workforce, you know, it's everybody involved in, in cyber. You know, it's sys admins through like forensic investigators. And they get training f through academia, you know, through uh, colleges and universities, vendor training, on the job training. And also, there's, uh, you know, free training out there on the web that people are able to do. Uh, one thing that we do at the SEI is we host our own LMS, custom LMS, that we're actually going away from and replacing with Moodle. And uh, so there's some organizational change that we've been pushing from the bottom up in order to get people to ad adopt Moodle in our organization. So we've been doing like recorded video lectures, quizzes, and cyber training labs on this LMS platform. And for these cyber training labs, we're deploying uh, a handful of virtual machines for a student to uh, you know, get hands-on experience using different tools and techniques. And sometimes these training events can scale thousands of VMs, hundreds of participants in large-scale cyber exercises. And in a large-scale cyber exercise, there's different teams for the participants, the blue cell or the blue team being the defenders that are trying to secure that network from the red cell, who are the opposing forces trying to hack into that network. And then we have the white cell that uh, manages the entire exercise, and they're the ones charged with tracking assessment. And so when we have these cyber training exercises, there's two main challenges that we face. One is realism. We try to virtualize as much as we can uh, so that we have scalability and repeatability in the training exercises. And sometimes we can't virtualize everything that these teams are seeing out in the real world. The other challenge is assessment. So how can we actually gauge what the students are doing with uh, these different GUI tools or command line tools and determine which team did it better? Is it the number of times they ran a command before they ran it correctly? Is it the amount of time they spent before they solved a particular challenge? And so I had Moodle in my previous uh, work role before I came to Carnegie Mellon, and I said, well, Moodle has this great robust quiz engine where we can get all kinds of metrics and we can you know, give quizzes to these students and these teams and track their performance uh, through multiple iterations of an exercise. And then we went to Mountain Moot last year, and we learned about H5P with the interactive video content, where we can take those boring recorded lectures and we can pause them and insert questions right there into the, uh, into the videos and help keep those students engaged. And then the other thing is with the cyber workforce, they need to know how to write programs. They need to understand scripting languages and programming languages, and we wanted to find an automated way to grade programming assignments because it's pretty hard to do that. And with Moodle, we found the virtual programming lab activity, and it's designed to execute a student's code inside a jail, but we didn't want the students to execute their code inside a jail. We wanted it to run on the actual virtual machines with, with the uh, full operating system that they're trying to secure or in some cases, attack, and so we modified the execution path inside our virtual programming labs so that the student's code ran exactly where they tested it out in their particular lab. And then another thing with Moodle and H5P is the uh, ability to leverage the Experience API, XAPI. 
Um, and, and this helps us track metrics, and hopefully we can take a look at uh, the logs from the quizzes and uh, also command line activity that the students are doing. We generated something to create XAPI statements telling us the user executed this command on this system, going with the XAPI active verb object construct. And we're feeding that into what one of our engineers who's out here in the audience, Brandon Wolf, has coined the MELK stack, stands for Moodle, uh, Elasticsearch, uh, Logstash, Learning Locker, and Kibana. Now those are tools that are largely used in the uh, cyber workforce for visualizing security events. You know, network flow data and uh, intrusion logs from hosts. And so we're trying to blend together uh, those sorts of metrics with the XAPI statements from, from uh, you know, Moodle and uh, H5P and see where we can correlate some of those assessment challenges. And with Moodle, plugins and the OAuth support uh, that came, I believe, with Moodle 3.5 has really been helping us gain ground uh, in our organization adopting Moodle because we're able to integrate it with our other products. Uh, we wrote a boost-based theme so that we could get rid of the, oh, well, I don't really like the way it looks aspect of it and make it blend in with our other tools. And we also wrote a plugin that would allow us to import the content from our custom LMS into Moodle. So that really helps facilitate a transition for us. And uh, with OAuth, we also now want to take it a step further and use the system account that's in there to integrate with more of our cyber range tools so that we can begin to deploy virtual machines from a new Moodle activity we're working on creating. And then we can display the virtual machine consoles right inside a Moodle activity. And so this screenshot here is something we do have implemented right now with one of our tools. Uh, but I want to take it full circle and get those metrics from the VMs back up into a Moodle activity where we can have a lab task right there above the, the, the VM console that says, you know, uh, create this config file. And that feedback loop would be in there. The activity would see that the student actually accomplished that task inside the cyber lab and would automatically advance to the next uh, objective in their assignment. And so Moodle, you know, with its flexibility, is letting us do all of this fun stuff. And uh, we're really excited to be able to, to leverage it and to talk about it. And if anybody wants to uh, come talk with me or Brandon later, we'd be happy to talk your ear off for an hour about any one of these things. Thank you. Um, just while you're thinking whether you've got a question for Adam, can I just say that he had his slides working automatically every 20 seconds? And as someone who's presented an Ignite talk in that fashion, it is terrifying. So well done <laughs> for, for doing that in an automatic fashion. Does anyone have a question? Just raise your hand if you've got a question for Adam. This gentleman over here, if you could wait for the microphone. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So with, with what you've done, have you been able to um, drive all the way down into um, say memory forensics analysis all the way into the steps of that to get like a flow so if a student completes the course you see the flow you capture that when they complete it the next time you can measure maybe the speed to perform that type of function yeah we're not there yet this is like really in its infancy that we're starting to gather these metrics but that's exactly like the direction we want to go with it we'll need more than an hour then <laughs> <laughs> any more questions for Adam no? Well, thank you very much.